So now we're thinking about the dermis. There's the epidermis, which is the superficial layer. Below that, there's the dermis, which is a thicker layer. And below the dermis, there's the hypodermis. So let's just draw a diagram and think about that again. So we've got the surface of the epidermis, the wavy line between the epidermis and the dermis below, and then the hypodermis deeper down. And what I want to think about in this section particularly is the type of tissue that the dermis is made of. Now the dermis is described as a moderately dense connective tissue. It's moderately dense. It's got a moderate amount of fibres in it. But as we'll see, there's actually quite a lot of fibres in it. But just thinking about the overall structure, first of all, the dermal papillae rise up into the epidermis. So this is a papillae here going up into the epidermis. And for this reason, the top layer of the dermis is, to, is described as the papillary region of the dermis. So this is a dermal papillae, this is the papillary region of the dermis, the top layer. And then lower down, this area is called the reticular layer of the dermis. This is the reticular layer. So why are these layers so-called? Well, in the papillary region, in the more superficial part of the dermis, there are interconnected fibres of collagen. And the collagen is very important because it's the collagen that gives tensile strength to the dermis. You can't pull a bit off because the collagen has got high tensile strength. And in the papillary region of the dermis, the collagen strands are relatively thin to give quite a lot of flexibility. But deeper down, the collagen fibres are much thicker and they're joined together. Now most of the collagen fibres actually run in one direction, parallel to the surface of the body, but they are interconnected. And an interconnected structure forms a network, and the Latin term for a network is a reticulum. So that's why this is called the reticular layer of the dermis. And this gives the dermis huge tensile strength. And in fact, if you take some dermis and dry it out, about 70% of the dry weight of the dermis are these collagen fibres. And this is why leather is such a tough substance as well. When, leather, when skin is tanned, cow hides or animal hides or whatever it is, is tanned, what you're left with is mostly the collagen and you get this tough leather as a result. So we've got the thinner strands of collagen at the top and a thicker networked layer of collagen further down. And this collagen is actually made by specialised cells called fibroblasts. So dotted throughout the dermis there's going to be some fibroblasts. And you might remember that a blast cell is a cell which produces something. So fibroblasts are producing fibrous tissue because we said this is a moderately dense connective tissue but it contains these fibres. It's a fibrous tissue produced by the fibroblasts. But of course, as well as being very strong, the dermis is also very stretchy and flexible and elastic. So as well as the collagen fibres, there's going to be networks of elastic fibres as well, going throughout the same areas. The elastic fibres giving it elasticity. So we end up with a moderately dense connective tissue, very strong yet very elastic because of these different fibres. The collagen for the tensile strength, the elastic fibres for the elasticity. But of course this kind of leaves us spaces in between the, in between the fibres. And these spaces 
are filled with a glycoprotein substance. Some people call this matrix. This glycoprotein substance is sometimes called matrix. And sometimes it's called ground substance. And it's filling in all of the gaps to give a firm three-dimensional structure. And the combination of the collagen and the glycoprotein matrix ground substance attracts water. So in the dermis there's quite a lot of water. It's called dermal water. And that's what gives it its three-dimensional structure. It kind of blows it up. So if you like, the dermis is sort of blown up with the ground substance and the water that that attracts. And that's what gives the dermis body. It gives it a three-dimensional blown up structure. It's called skin turga, the turga, the pressure of the fluids inside the skin giving it its body. Now, there are some other types of cells in the dermis as well. For example, there's a lot of these cells. Do you remember what you call these octopus-shaped cells? These are the dendritic cells. They are derived from monocytes from the blood. <clears throat> and they're very important immunological cells. They detect the presence of any antigens and they communicate with the specific immune system, with the lymphocytes, with the lymphocytes very often in the lymph nodes because these can migrate into the lymphatics and they detect any infection which can get into the skin. And as well as that in the skin there's the macrophages, the larger macrophages. And these are very important again as a first line of defense because they're phagocytic. So we've got antigen recognizing cells, we've got antigen phagocytosing cells. And the dendritic cells and the macrophages both derive from monocytes which migrate in from the blood vessels. And also in the dermis there's another type of cell called a mast cell. And mast cells have a large nucleus and they have dark staining large granules in them as well. And these large dark granules contain histamine and other inflammatory mediators. So if the skin is traumatized, these granules will release histamine and the histamine will mediate a localized inflammatory response. So that's the dermis. It's a moderately dense connective tissue. Now below the dermis, in the hypodermis, there's lots of fat cells. And fat cells contain a vacuole which can store, which stores fat. These cells are correctly termed, what's the correct term for fat cells? With vacuoles of fat inside. These are called adipocytes, the adipocytes. So the hypodermis is primarily composed of adipose tissue. And this forms a nice insulating padded layer. So trauma on the skin below, you've got a nice layer of padding and hopefully it's going to stop you bashing on bony structures below, for example. But of course in your shin bone, you haven't got much adipose tissue over the tibia. That's why it really hurts when you bash your shin because you're bashing the periosteum of the tibia, which of course is very painful. But other places you've got a nice layer of padding, a nice layer of protection. And the fatty tissue is also very thermoinsulating as well. It helps to keep us warm. So seals, for example, and whales can swim in oceans where it's absolutely freezing cold. And because they've got a nice layer of blubber around the surface of the body, 
they can maintain normal physiological core temperatures. So a layer of fat in the hypodermis. And this layer is partly determined by hormones and your sex. So if you're male, you tend to store any excess adipose tissue in the abdomen. That's why you get men with quite fat tummies sometimes. But with women, the fat tends to be stored all over the surface of the body. That's why men can have quite bony, spindly looking legs. And you can see muscles and tendons sticking out at the side. Whereas women tend to have a more sort of even shape to the surface of their legs and other parts of the body. Because women have a thicker layer of subcutaneous adipose tissue. Well next we're going to look at some of the specialised structures within the dermis and the first one I want to look at now we've considered the moderately dense nature of the connective tissue is the nervous innovation in the dermis.